Good day, Bisset Second Year students who are taking ALS 24, which is the Electronics Workshop Practice 2. This is your course facilitator, Sir Ken G. E. Merenciano. If you can still remember last time, I uploaded a video as your reference for the next topic, which is all about an overview on satellite. This time, I will be I, I recorded this video in continuation uh, on the topic about satellite and this time I will be presenting um, another material which is all about the TBRO. TBRO stands for Television Receive Only or what we call Television Satellite. Last time, um, I uh, presented uh, a topic about satellite uh, when you say that satellite these are uh, can be classified into two we have the natural uh, for example the moon and the artificial or man-made satellites satellites uh, comprises of, of uh, important of, uh, essential parts these are the transponders the thrusters uh, we also have uh, the solar panel now uh, this time, I mean, I'm going to discuss how your television receives images accompanied by sounds through the help of a satellite and a, sat uh, a TV satellite or a DBS or the direct broadcast satellite or direct TV. So here is the material that I uploaded last, uh, last, uh, last first week of April. How satellite uh, TV work or operate. Let us uh, trace the history of satellite. The first uh, satellite or home dishes were expensive metal unit. Uh, it was on the early 90s that took up a huge chunk of yard space. These years, only the most diehard TV fans would go through all the hassle and expense of putting in their own dish. Satellite TV was a lot harder to get than broadcast and cable TV. Now, we have uh, small and portable home dishes uh, 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 for programming and other uh, forms of channel for uh, viewing purposes. Conceptually, when we say home dishes or a satellite TV is simply like a broadcast television. It is a wireless system for delivering television program or channels to a viewer's house or to our end user. Broad, broad, both broadcast TV and satellite station transmit programming by means of a radio station. Early satellite TV viewers were explorers of sorts. Uh, they use different. Uh, uh, they use their expensive dishes to discover unique programming that is not intended for mass audiences. The dish and the receiving equipment, uh, the the receiver, um, gave viewers the tools to pick up foreign stations uh, in order to have live feeds uh, between different broadcast stations, activities from NASA, and other things uh, transmitted using this uh, satellite. Uh, in connection to satellite TV programming, we have two uh, major sources. Okay, Satellite TV providers get programming from two major sources. We have the national turnaround channels. These are what we call cable channels. And the other one is the local channel. Okay. Local channels are, are channels that appellate in your local area. For example, in the Philippine setting, we have the uh, ABS-CBN before. Okay, um, the other ones, the GMA and the TB5, or formerly known as ABC5. These are local channels. Um, when we say uh, turnaround channels, uh, 
Uh, these are channels that have their own distribution center that beams their programming to a genius, uh, geosynchronous satellite. Don't you know that a uh, television satellite uh, rotates its orbit in a geostation or geosynchronous? Okay. The, the broadcast center uses large satellite dishes to pick up these analog and digital signals from certain or several sources. Satellite signals have a pretty long path to follow before they appear on your TV screen in the form of your station or show or program. It's simply because satellite signals contain high quality of data. But it would not work or it would be impossible to transmit them if it does not undergo a process of removing, um, converting the, the high digital data into uh, uh, a com- uh, by means of compression okay compression in the context of satellite tv signal it pertains to unnecessary or repetitive information is removed from the signal before it is transmitted uh, this part the signal is reconstructed after transmission so we have different uh, we have uh, a standard of compression known as the MPEG. MPEG is an acronym for uh, uh, moving pictures moving picture expert group. It is a standard video file of compression. So with MPEG compression the provider is able to transmit significantly more channels. We have uh, five MPEG standards but in the US uh, using direct TV in DISH network, the two major satellite TV providers use MPEG-2. Uh, this format or video file is used to store movies on DVDs and for cable television. Uh, with MPEG-2, the TV provider can reduce the 270 Mbps stream to about 5 to 10. So, the standards of compression can be determined by means of an MPEG file. Okay. These are the standards of compression. Okay. At the broadcast center, the high quality digital stream of video goes to an MPEG encoder, which converts the programming to the MPEG4 video file of the correct size and format for the satellite receiver in your house. So aside from compression, we have this term called satellite TV encoding and encryption. Within the, the high digital data uh, undergoes uh, through an encoder uh, that converts the programming into a certain format uh, needed for the satellite receiver in your house. In other words, encoding works in conjunction with compression. To analyze each video frame and eliminate redundant unwanted noise or data and extrapolate information from other frames. The process reduces the overall size of the file and each frame class can be encoded in one of the ways. So this is a uh, satellite dish. Uh, actually a satellite dish consists of two, two significant parts. We have the ball shape or the parabolic dish, this one, and the one that I am preparing to before, uh, if you can still remember, is uh, somewhat like a camera, but this is a central feed. To transmit the signal, a controller sends it to the horn, um, and the dish focuses the signal into a relatively narrow beam. So, uh, the last part in the television system um, process of uh, relaying signals is the satellite or the last channel or the last part or the last station is the satellite receiver. The satellite receiver has four essential jobs or functions. First, it discambles the in- encrypted signal. Second one, based on the MPEG format, the, uh, the digital MPEG-2 or MPEG-4 is being converted into an analog format that is fitted for a standard television to be recognized. 
The third one class, it extracts the individual channels from the larger satellite signal. And the last job is to keep uh, track of pay-per-view programs and periodically phones the computer at the provider's headquarters to communicate billing information. So this is the uh, material about uh, how a satellite uh, TV works. To get to know more about uh, a satellite TV, uh, here is a video from Le6. Uh, I encourage you class uh, to, to, to understand the P6 behind engineering a fairly busy Le6 channel. Right? Uh, here's a sample video on how a satellite uh, a television works with the help of a satellite disk or receiver. So, credits to Le6 channel. Uh, I, I, I get this video. Uh, as your reference to further understand how a satellite and uh, TV dish works uh, in order to uh, uh, produce an image and sounds from your television. So without further ado, here is a video. Satellites have revolutionized the way that we humans live. In this video, we are going to explore how satellite television works and also the big money flows associated with this broadcasting business. Towards the end of the video, we will also explain the interesting reason why there is no buffering of your TV broadcasts in the way that internet videos are buffered. To understand satellite TV broadcasting properly, we first need to have some basic knowledge about the parts of a satellite and how a satellite moves. As you can see, the Earth revolves around the Sun in an elliptical orbit, and the Earth also turns on its own axis. You can see that this axis of rotation is not perpendicular to the elliptical orbit surface, but slightly inclined as shown. For satellite TV to work, the satellite should not move relative to your house. This means that the satellite should rotate at the same speed as that of the Earth, which means it will take 24 hours to complete one cycle. Let's work out the force balance equation of the gravitational and centrifugal forces at this point using this speed information. You can see that the orbital radius required to achieve the no relative motion condition for the satellite is exactly 42,164 kilometers. This orbit is known as a geostationary orbit. All satellites used for satellite TV purposes should be parked in this orbit. And this visual shows how crowded the geostationary belt has become nowadays. Now, let's find out a few things about the satellite itself. The energy required for a satellite mostly comes from its solar panels. However, if the satellite is not facing the sun, a battery pack helps to continue its operations. It is interesting to note that satellites have small engines called thrusters. The gravitational field experienced by a satellite is not uniform due to irregularities on the Earth's surface and the presence of the moon and the sun. The thruster produces a very minute amount of force to always keep the orientation and position of the satellite correct. The most important part of a satellite for communication purposes is the transponder. The transponders receive signals from the base station at one frequency, amplify the power of the signal, remove any noise, and transmit it back to Earth at a different frequency. The uplink frequency is always higher than the downlink frequency. You can see antennas of different frequency bands. For D2H, the KU band frequency is generally used. These KU band signals have good power, which allows a smaller size receiver antenna. In the past, C band signals, which have lower energy, were used for television communications, and that's why huge antennas were used in those earlier days. However, KU band signals are affected by rain, so scientists have had to overcome this issue with improvements in satellite technology. Now that we have some basic information, let's see how hundreds of TV channels reach to your home via the satellite TV technology. Consider the case of this TV channel, CNN. They have a video production facility and keep on producing content for mass viewing 24-7. We call them a program source. 
This channel needs to be available at the same time on many satellite TV broadcasters' networks. We call them DBS providers. To achieve this, CNN just beams their signal to their rented transponder in its geostationary orbit. It should be noted that before sending the video signals, the program source inserts advertisements at suitable points, and this is the first source of income for the channel. Now the CNN signal is commonly available at one point, and any DBS provider can access the signal once they have made a business agreement with the program source. Similarly, the DBS provider collects signals from many such channels or program sources. At their broadcast center, they club all these content together and do video formatting like MPEG compression, standardization of bitrate, and encryption of the signal. After that, the DBS provider beams the signal to their rented transponder in a satellite. A DBS provider rents many transponders to handle the huge amount of data they have to transmit. This way, around 300 to 400 channels will be available on a single DBS provider satellite. Now the last phase in signal transmission, the transmission of the signals to the end user. Here, the end user has to angle their dish antenna towards the DBS provider satellite. You might have seen that for different DBS providers. There are different angles for the dishes even if the dishes are all in the same location. This is because the different providers might be using different satellites for transmitting their signals. The signals received by your dish are encrypted to prevent piracy and only a dedicated card in the set top box will be able to decrypt it back. Do you know that the live events you are watching on your satellite television are actually delayed by a few seconds? The signal leaving the broadcast center has to travel a huge distance via two satellites before it reaches you. Even though the signal travels at the speed of light, such a huge distance will cause a delay of around 0.5 seconds. Moreover, a live broadcaster may also add a specific profanity delay on top of the normal delay. Now for the interesting comparison between internet videos and satellite TV. Both of the television and internet technologies transmit data in a digital format, as zeros and ones. Why is there no buffering on your TV in the way that you see it on YouTube or Facebook videos? On satellite television, the broadcaster offers only 300 to 400 channels, or video streams, and the user has to select just one from this small collection. However, on the internet, the demands of each user are very different. There are millions of videos on the internet to choose from. This means that the volume of traffic handled by TV broadcasters is nowhere close to the level of internet traffic, and it is this huge level of traffic on the internet which may sometimes cause traffic congestion and buffering. This video explains how satellites play a role in television broadcasting. To understand how satellites help your GPS to work, please check our next video in this series. Thank you! Okay, so credits to the Lessix channel. Uh, I got this uh, video material from the Lessix. Uh, it's a channel of uh, the physics uh, behind engineering. To, mo to know more about uh, satellite and other technology, uh, you can visit, uh, like, uh, subscribe to this channel. I got this video material for educational purpose, uh, purposes only. Uh, about uh, information about satellite and other technologies and how it uh, to further understand how it works how signal is being distributed uh, from a programming source to, through a satellite it could be converted by means of a transponder and retransmitted again uh, into a low signal or the C, C, C band um, to uh, to our respective uh, viewer house or or uh, to the end users so I hope you enjoy this video if you have questions or, or clarifications uh, uh, you can message me um, uh, so uh, if you have still uh, questions or for clarifications again you can uh, visit me and my lines are always open uh, just to address your concern thank you thank you for your time and as what I always said, uh, keep safe. Zombie apocalypse.